Hello and welcome to back to the Canadian Film Fest. My name is Mark Kishori. I'm one of the programmers at the festival. Uh, and we are joined by the filmmaking teams of Ashgrove and Feeling the Apocalypse um, for a little Q&A. Um, uh, you know, for, for Ashgrove, we've got Jonas Chernick, uh, director Jeremy Lalonde, Amanda Bruegel, and Natalie Brown in one of our fantastic festival t-shirts. Um, they are in Glasgow right now. Uh, waiting for their the world premiere of Ashgrove tomorrow. We're recording this on March 2nd. Um, and I'm going to talk to them about the film. But I want to start off talking about um, the short film that played before it, Feeling the Apocalypse. And we've got director Chen Seng Yap and um, Anderson Todd, whose voice you hear um, in the film. Um, uh, Chen Seng, if you could just start by telling me about, you know, how you came about Anderson's work and and what was the impetus for um, making this piece? I'd love to hear about that. Well, the the reason I made this piece was because at the time, um, well, I, I'm a film student in Sheridan College in in Oakville, so uh, I'm often asked to come up with new like projects, new 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 ideas of films to work on and at the time I was going through a bout of my own anxiety about the the, the future that was coming for all of us uh, and I, I remember that I couldn't I was thinking about climate change pretty much every day and I couldn't think of anything like else I wanted to like work on or wanted to do a story about so how I got to Anderson was a uh was a little interesting. We 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 I think we were both uh users. We were both um people that perused this um this subreddit called uh R Collapse. And that's where I I I I I found that that's that's the one of the places that I found um my my potential interview subjects and Anderson was uh, happened to be happened to be there as well, and we, and he reached out to me, and we began talking. Oh my god! So you guys met on Reddit? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, great. Um. Uh. That's that's amazing to hear. Um. Anderson, you know, talking to you for a second. What I love so much about the film is that it's in the first person. You know, you're 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 not talking about it in an academic way. You're 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 talking about these things as you experience them, um, uh, these anxieties that you were feeling and how you dealt with them or, or failed to deal with them. I, I would just love to hear about um, um, how, wh wh when was the first time you were, you became conscious of it and, and, and um, how and when did you start integrating it into your work as a psychotherapist, if at all? Um, so when did I first become aware of it? I mean, it, it's kind of continuous. Uh, I'm a child of the Cold War. So, uh, you know, my, my childhood was lots of like echoes of duck and cover. cover. Um, you know, it really came on the radar probably when I was about 10. Uh, it was about then that it started to occur to me that the difference between, you know, like nuclear war and the um, environmental problem is that all we had to do to get through the Cold War was not push the buttons. Mm -hmm. Whereas what we have to do to get through this is change absolutely everything. Hmm. So, and when that order. hit me, yeah, it's a tall order. Um, you know, so it was a, it was a longstanding uh, interest of my own and concern of my own. Um, in terms of sort of my academic work, I, I do teach at U of T uh, and also my psychotherapy, you know, it's just seeing it in everybody else. I was experiencing this stuff and like it, you know, it's an, it's an ongoing you know, wait through the day, but seeing it in everybody else, seeing it in my students, seeing it in my clients, right? Seeing it in friends, acquaintances, family. That's when it really started to dawn on me that perhaps something more needed to be done to address this and not enough was being done in the therapeutic sphere. Too much, mm -hmm. here are ways to feel better mm -hmm. and not enough, okay, let's look at the square on. Yeah, so. yeah. fantastic. Um, I'm gonna pivot to start talking to um, the Ashgrove team. The reason we, we paired these two films together. And, um, you know, I talk about this a little bit in, in the intro that people are going to see before the films is um, 
they're both thinking about what comes after the crisis. You know, they're both thinking about the 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 um, how people change when they're when they're faced with the pressure of um, something existential. Um, you know, uh, so uh, Jeremy, I want to start by talking to you. Um, you're the director of the film, but uh, Jonas and Amanda are credited as co-writers. And uh, Jonas in particular is also one of the producers on the film. So um, it's very rare to see um, that the people on screen also have such deep involvement behind the camera as well. So I would love to hear about how this whole thing came together and, and what was that collaboration like? Yeah, I mean, I often try to, you know, bring that kind of collaboration to every project I do. I just don't necessarily always give people the credit they deserve. Um, you know, even back when I did Sex After Kids, when Amanda was involved, a lot of stuff for her own character came from her life and she offered ideas. Uh, and, and I filtered that through the script I was already working on. Mm -hmm. This was a little bit more in depth in regards to that. When we set out to start talking about this film, it was pre-pandemic. We didn't even know, COVID wasn't even a, a oh, whisper wow. on our lips at the time. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of interesting that it kind of turned into something that, you know, can now be seen as like a post-pandemic movie. But uh, it certainly wasn't the intention when we set out to make it. So Jonas and I were traveling uh, with our last film from um, Edmonton to Calgary in the festival circuit. And we started talking about what we wanted to do next and the kind of film we wanted to work on. And, and that we both wanted to do something very different from what we'd done before. And Jonas said that he wanted to do like a really intimate, you know, two, four person cast movie, probably single location of just characters just really getting into interpersonal relationship dynamics. Um, and it to really be like an acting study and showcase. And I said, I, love, I, I like that idea. I think there's something really exciting with that. But this, the stakes for me have to be the end of the world. Mm. You know, I want... The, the outcome of these arguments to not just be about whether or not they're going to like share the same bedroom at the end of the day. I said, I want it to be more than that. And so, of course, Jonas thought that was crazy. But the more we talked about it, the more we're like, well, how, how, what would our version of that be like? Like, we're not going to make the Roland Emmerich movie. It's mm -hmm. not going to be the day after tomorrow or something like that. It's like, what's our version of that look like that we can still do all of these things? And we started and we kind of slowly came around to this idea. And then from there, uh, we drew up a very short list of, of actors that we thought we'd be excited to work with on something like this. And, um, and Amanda was uh, one of the top choices by far. And so literally when we got to Edmonton, I sent her a message and was like, hey, we need to talk very soon because I want to pitch something to you. And she was in at, at the word go. Fantastic. Uh, Amanda, what, what was that like? What was your first reaction to the story? Uh, well, uh, my there was no story at the beginning. I think that's the thing that uh -huh. was a piece. Uh, typically, uh, as actors, especially as workhorse Canadian actors, you're sort of handed a role. Everything's been prepackaged. It's been assumed for you. You don't have a heck of a lot of say in how to tailor the character or how to fine tune the, the actual story. Mm -hmm. And so being able to be so creative with Jeremy and Jonas was the thing that was so enticing to me and um, it was so organic and everyone Natalie can attest to this everyone was able to uh, sort of create their own character their own backstory their mm. own personal obstacles challenges secrets um, and so it was incredibly personal mm -hmm. and because it was personal I felt like um, even in ours because we did a lot of this over obviously this happened during when we were all in lockdown it felt like we were creating a story writing a story and rehearsing all at the same time right. and I've been saying well well sort of talking about this film that it's ruined me now going forward for how to do films in the future or any projects in the future because this is only how I want to do things right. going forward is just to be creative and honest and uh, fall down the rabbit hole together as an ensemble right. fantastic um, um, Natalie, I'd love, I'd, and, and Yunus, I'd love to hear from you guys as well. Uh, you know, uh, Natalie, how did you come into the project and, and get involved? Um, I think it was Amanda or, um, Jeremy had reached out. I can't remember if it was like, uh, a group email, but I had worked briefly with Jeremy before, um, and had a plan an orgy and a fan of his work. Um, 
and of Amanda's. I've worked with Jones before, but in different mm -hmm. capacities. And this was definitely the most um, unique opportunity. It was also the first, it was the first thing out the gate of the pandemic. It was the very first thing coming out of lockdown where, you know, it was um, a very kind of like intimate, insular way to approach, um, you know, as Amanda said, creating your own character, bringing your own costumes, doing your own hair and makeup, like really creating the characters from the inside out. Um, and it was, I was like, is this the new way of doing things? Uh -huh. and, if, and if it is, it's, it's terrifying, but uh, equally thrilling. Um, you know, it really did feel like let's hold hands, jump off a cliff and a very experimental way of, of approaching each scene and working with Sean Doyle. Um, yeah, it was, it was exhilarating and thrilling, but ultimately like, very, very satisfying. And I think, yeah, Amanda kind of said it sort of ruins the process um, because you just want to say yes to work with these people or I just want to say yes to a really great script. And in this case, it was really, um, um, you know, creating everything collaboratively and the most unique experience to date. I hope we get to replicate something like this again, but definitely the most unique thing I've ever done. Yeah. Jonas, you've, you know, you've, um, you're primarily an actor, but you've, um, produced a bunch of stuff. You've you've written stuff now, and, and, and this feels like it, this is sounding like it was a, a a whole new kind of creative exercise unto its own. But I'm curious to hear from you about um, you know, as someone who's sometimes just acting on screen, and, and, and sometimes someone who's been so deeply involved in the actual creation of a film from the start. Um, what 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 are those two experiences like? I imagine it's much more stressful when you're a producer as well, but it's got to have its um, uh, pros as well, right? Yeah, producing is like the most stressful thing I I've ever done. I I, I hate it so much, but I I've always said like when I have a, <laughs> when I have a story that I want to tell and I want to and have a great part that I wrote for myself that I want to play. There's nobody that's more motivated to get that going than me, so that I end up producing these things. But, but this one was special because I mean the, the the point of the exercise was Jeremy and I saying, let's try and make a film in a way that we that neither of us have ever made it before. And coming off of this the James versus the Future Self, which was we worked you know really we belabored that script, we worked that script so hard, it was so tight, and you know we had a massive crew, and here we were going to make something that we were going to build from the ground up with with the actors, and it was really intimate and adventurous, and for us it felt very it felt very freeing. So it was just a different way to make a movie. The fact that it was happening during an actual pandemic made it all the, that much more kind of exciting and insane for us, because for 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 our tiny crew and our small cast, it was the first time any of us had been in a community situation in like eight months. Mm -hmm. And we shot it in September of, of, of 2020. And so we were suddenly there, we were all living sort of on, we had like one floor of a hotel in Kitchener uh, that was just ours. And then we would shuttle every morning to Jeremy's family's, his wife's family's farm where the film is shot. And we were just between those two places and no contact with anybody else. So the whole thing was just really wild. You know, kind of exciting, you know, creative adventure. And and COVID rules on set were, were new for all of us. And so mm -hmm. we were just trying to figure out how do you do a COVID production? Even though we only had 20 people, cast mm -hmm. and crew combined, it was still, you know, testing every morning and, and making sure everyone was good. Even my dog Rufus was there. We tested him too. He got the, the thing to the forehead. And mm -hmm. He was fine. He was negative. Yeah, he, he came up negative. It was good. <laughs> That's great. Um, if... Uh... If um, if I can pivot back to feeling the apocalypse for a second, um, you know, one of the things uh, 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 that I thought about with both these films is, you know, thinking about craft, what's so great about Ashgrove is it, it, it's got this sci-fi backdrop, but at, at its core, it's really a relationship drama, you know? Um, and uh, I, I, I'm curious about for, for, for you, Chancing, um, you know, there, there's a dozen different ways you could have shown us what you show in the film, uh, but you decide to animate it. So I'm curious to hear about that decision and, and, and why, it, why did you decide to go that route? Do you have a particular interest in animation or uh, did it feel right for this project specifically? I, I think the answer is the, the latter because uh, before this, I have never had any experience in animation before or really any interest in doing an animated film. But uh, 
when when I embarked on this project, uh, I think we were still we was like it was still very unclear about whether we could be out there shooting a live action documentary. Mm. So I was I was thinking uh very hard about um who are the people available to me and who are the crew members available to me and how how I could make this pandemic proof in a way. So mm. so animation was came out as a natural answer because um the 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 lead animator who works works on worked on this film is a uh, is a close friend of mine and mm. he's a uh, very very talented. And yeah, because the 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 art is really beautiful. I'd love to talk. I'd love to hear a little bit about the 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 animation process of it. The animation process of it. Um. Well, one third of it was I think was true sort of like. 100% true stop motion. Mm-hmm. And because of our our timeline was our production timeline was much shorter than normal for an animated project. Mm. So it was we had to like finish it all in like a few months. Mm. And so we couldn't do everything through stop motion. So I had to be very selective with which of which portions of the film were going to be actually hand animated mm-hmm. frame by frame. So we spent one day in the studio for those, and then for the rest, my my animator went went to his house and he drew out all these cutouts and he scanned them into his into his scanner, and then we took those um digital digital cutouts, put them into Premiere Pro, and then we sort of uh, we sort of um sort of animated them with keyframes gotcha. in in the computer, and then there's also a component in there where it's where there's live live action at live action footage so yeah. it's not just a stop motion animation it's, it's also a mixed media in there that's fantastic uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's kind of like a little bit of an animation hack that's great um, yeah um, fa- yeah sorry go ahead oh i, I just want to say also that uh, um one of my main inspirations was is this a uh, filmmaker called uh american filmmaker cinda aga uh-huh. i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing her name correctly so she, she was my main, main inspiration for so going down this road Fantastic. Um, uh, Jeremy and, and, and Jonas and team, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, looking at this film set on a farm, it's very easy to imagine that it was like a lovely, easygoing time, but there's always uh, difficulties in filmmaking and stresses. So I'd love to hear about, you know, um, <laughs> what, 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 were, what were maybe the most difficult parts of, uh, 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 of putting this together? You Give know? us the dirt. Well, well, on the second day, we we dropped the the camera in oh the God. lake. Oh my in God! The in the lake while shooting the, the boat stuff. On day two, <laughs> we thought our movie. The lake. You were in a canoe, we... and everyone in the canoe fell out of the canoe and rolled into the water. Wow. Yeah, we thought, and we were also shoot. We didn't have a back of camera. We were shooting out of Toronto. We kind of thought at that point maybe our movie's done on day two. Mm-hmm. We didn't know. Like, luckily, we had insurance. It kicked in. It was fine. We had a camera back by the end of the day, and we even caught up. And But it was also because of the, you know, the, the collaborative nature of the film. You know, while Jonas was doing the producer panic and dealing with making sure we got another camera, I was over there in writer world going, how do I take all of today's scenes I needed to shoot and condense them into shorter scenes but more focused mm-hmm. um, and still make our day? And to be honest, what we have is better than what we were going to shoot because <laughs> I think I would have ended up cutting a lot of it and trimming it back. Just knowing that at that section of the movie, we needed to get through it a bit more. So in, I'd, I'll never say that it was a good thing. The camera fell in the, in the water, but it was a really great exercise in going, I'm going to, we're going to save this. It's not going to, we're not going to be a downside. We're going to make this work. Um, and, and, and that was kind of the approach for the whole film. Like we didn't have a lot of, we had a couple little things that that made us nervous, but our number one rule going into this movie was everyone has to agree that it's okay to fail mm-hmm. and that we have to take big risks and there's no perceived outcome. And if you go in this expecting to do something right or perfect, you're in the wrong film. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's, that's great. And, and I would love to um, hear about the acting process a little bit more because Amanda, this, um, you know, th- this is a film and a story that's really turning around your character. Um, and, and, and you guys have talked about a little bit about, you know, how um, 
it wasn't necessarily a super tight script and, and, and things were a little bit more loose and collaborative. So, um, you know, as, as far as the acting process of it goes, were you sticking very hard to a script? Were you improvising at all? What was, what did that look like? Love to hear. Well, there were, with, with Jeremy's films, there's always that he gives his actors an incredible amount of freedom. So there's always an element of improv in there. Uh, but the way that he approached this as a director, uh, he he was sort of the keeper of secrets. Every character had uh, a secret that would be revealed throughout the duration of, of shooting. And um, because the film does revolve around me, I, I didn't know any of the secrets and they mm -hmm. played out time. And so- uh, They also uh, shot in chronological order. Oh, yeah. wow, okay. So yeah. did you, so Amanda, did you know about the reveal at the end? No. Oh my God, I okay. A lot of the stuff. I mean, I, I had my own idea and that's the wonderful thing because as a, as a human, if I, I really was Jennifer, I would be grasping at straws and trying to come up with different outcomes and guessing. And so there really wasn't a heck of a lot of acting on my part. It was literally just reacting to the circumstances that were around me. Um, of course, I had my backstory. I had the script. I, 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 I anticipated what I thought would be the end, mm. but during takes, Jeremy would throw in something else or we would, he would have us completely redo a take on the flip side, one a little funnier or a little lighter. I never knew what was going to make the final version. And so it was just um, every time acting in its own little mini movie that was eventually stitched together to become the, the final feature. Um, so it was uh, bizarre. And one, but one thing I want to credit like all of our cast with Amanda, Amanda in particular, but all the cast was like when you deal with scenes that are you know very loose and 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 largely improvised to some extent, you know the typical danger with actors is that everyone wants to win the scene, everyone wants to have the best line or the most lines or say the thing, but every actor in this film was just there for the other actors and is like ridiculously present and only, you know, and it's completely motivated in every single thing they do. And that was really rewarding to watch like them be a real team mm -hmm. and know that it wasn't about them. It was about the scene and what the scene needed. Uh, and so it was a really great atmosphere to work in where there was just no egos. All right. That's fantastic. We are uh, actually past uh, uh, our time mark, so I, I, I'm so sorry that, that that I can't talk to you guys more. I I I, I want to sneak in one last question for Anderson. Um, you know, I feel like we could talk to you for an hour about this topic, and and, and it's just so interesting because um, uh, the way we talk about the climate crisis and climate anxiety is evolving, and that that's what's so unique about. Um, feeling the apocalypse, I think that it articulates the fact that a lot of people are feeling this way. Um, I, I'm hoping this is a good question to end on. Um, you know, as, as far as climate anxiety goes, uh, can you offer any advice in terms of um, what are the best ways to confront it or, or, or deal with it on a daily basis? Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, although, to be honest, I have about 100 questions for Ashgrove, but I'll, I'll set those aside. Um, you know, there are two things in the main that you can do, right? One of them is it, it's an anxiety. And like any other anxiety, you know, there's a good suite of techniques for dealing with that in terms of breathing. It's not hard to find that. Get yourself a therapist, learn some basic techniques, fine. But unique to climate anxiety, get into nature. Go take a walk somewhere with trees. Mm -hmm. Connecting with it is a way of affirming your value. But above and beyond that, there's all kinds of good physiological reasons. Trees are just good for us. We evolved close to them. If something dangerous happens, we can run up into them. They're constantly bathing chemicals onto us. Go for a walk by yourself with somebody else, not with a phone, not with headphones, walk under some trees. Uh, and that's the single best thing you can do both for value clarification, but also for calming, to be honest. Fantastic. I, well, I hope we all get to go on a walk like that today. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in person before too long. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Sit back, relax when it's the greatest. Don't